Hello and welcome to the Oakland County Medical Control Authority's brief overview of the Southeast Michigan Regional Medication Box. This brief presentation will provide an overview of the new drug box that was put into service in May 2017. A long time in the making, the new drug box is a lighter and simplified version of the old drug box. Protocol 535, which is the Southeast Michigan Medication Exchange and Replacement Procedure, has been updated with new information and can be found on the protocol section of the OCMCA website. Included in the protocol is the drug box schematic, which provides an overview of the drug box contents and where each drug or supply item is stored. As you look through the new drug box, you'll notice that medications are grouped together into treatment sections to simplify locating specific drugs. On the top shelf, you'll find the cardiac arrhythmia, overdose, chest pain, and anaphylaxis allergic reaction treatment sections, as well as additional medications and supplies. On the bottom left of the top shelf, you'll find five vials of adenosine with six milligrams and two milliliters, three vials of amiodarone with 150 milligrams and three milliliters, and four vials or amps of magnesium sulfate with one gram and two milliliters. In the middle of the top shelf, you'll find the overdose treatment section, which is where naloxone and the intranasal mucosal atomizer are stored. A total of four milligrams of naloxone is supplied here. Typically, you'll find two pre-filled syringes with two milligrams and two milliliters. However, you may find one vial containing four milligrams and 10 milliliters. EMS will likely only find the 10 milliliter version if there is a shortage of the pre-filled syringes. But remember, your APAC is stocked with four milligrams of naloxone as well. Again, you should always find the atomizer located with the naloxone shown here. The chest pain treatment section shown here is where you'll find one bottle of nitro containing 0.4 milligram tablets. In addition, you'll find the aspirin, which is supplied as four chewable 81 milligram tablets. Occasionally, you may find that the aspirin is supplied in a pill bottle. In the anaphylaxis allergic reaction section, you'll find two amps or vials of epinephrine one milligram in one milliliter, also known as epi one to 1000, and two 50 milligram in one milliliter vials of diphenhydramine, also known as Benadryl. At the far bottom right corner of the top shelf, you'll find two vials of Ondansetron, also known as Zofran, which is supplied as four milligrams in two milliliters. In the upper left corner of the top shelf, you'll find one unit dose cup of acetaminophen or Tylenol supplied as 650 milligrams in 20.3 milliliters. One oral liquid syringe is supplied with the acetaminophen. One tube of lidocaine in a vial or pre-filled syringe of normal saline is supplied as shown here. Supplies can be found in the top right corner of the top shelf. These include 12 alcohol pads, 5 blunt cannulas, 3 filtered needles, 3 IV additive labels, 3 18 gauge by 1 and a half inch long needles, 1 stopcock, and 1 red lock which is used to seal all used drug boxes. Controlled substances are located on the far left of the middle shelf. Here you'll find 3 amps or vials of fentanyl with 100 micrograms in 2 milliliters, 2 vials of morphine with 10 milligrams in 1 milliliter, and 4 vials of midazolam with 5 milligrams in 1 milliliter. The total amount of midazolam, or Versed, has been increased from 2 vials in the old drug box to 4 vials in the new drug box. To the right of the controlled substances, you'll find the respiratory distress medications. In the first compartment, you'll find one vial of methylprednisolone, also known as Solumedrol, with 125 milligrams, and one 50 milligram tablet of prednisone. In the second and third compartments, you'll find six vials of albuterol with 2.5 milligrams and 3 milliliters, and two vials of ipatromium bromide, or atrovent, with 0.5 milligrams and 2.5 mLs. In the last compartment of the respiratory distress section, you'll find one nebulizer. You'll also find a new drug, recepinephrine, also known as racemic epi, supplied as one vial with 11.25 milligrams and 0.5 milliliters. See the CRUIT protocol 3-16 for details. In the bottom of the drug box, you'll find medications for cardiac arrest and bradycardia, as well as additional medications and supplies. The cardiac arrest medications include epinephrine, 1 to 10,000, supplied as seven pre-filled syringes with one milligram in 10 milliliters. Calcium chloride supplied as two pre-filled syringes with one gram in 10 milliliters. And sodium bicarbonate, which is supplied as two pre-filled syringes with 50 mil equivalents in 50 milliliters. Next, you'll find atropine for bradycardia, supplied as three pre-filled syringes with one milligram in 10 milliliters. 
The additional medications include one pre-filled amp of dextrose 50% with 25 grams in 50 milliliters, and three pre-filled syringes of lidocaine with 100 milligrams in 5 milliliters. Additional supplies can be found at the bottom of the drug box too. The plastic bag seen here contains five one milliliter syringes with a lure lock and needle, five three milliliter syringes with needle, and five 10 milliliter syringes. Here you'll find one 50 milliliter bag of normal saline and two 60 drop sets of IV tubing. The last items in the drug box are the replacement form, which needs to be completed each time you complete a drug box exchange, and a discrepancy form, which must be completed each time you identify a discrepancy in your drug box. Discrepancies include missing or broken medications or supplies. Dopamine has been removed from the drug box. The protocols that indicate the use of dopamine will be updated by the state of Michigan to reflect this change. LSAs will be notified when the applicable protocols are ready for implementation. You may notice that the amount of naloxone in the new drug box has been reduced. In the old drug box, we carried a total of 12 milligrams. In the new drug box, we now carry a total of 4 milligrams. But remember, there's another 4 milligrams in your APAC. Again, you'll either find the naloxone supplied in your drug box and APAC as two pre-filled syringes of 2 milligrams in 2 milliliters or one vial containing 4 milligrams in 10 milliliters. The amount of dextrose has also been reduced. Instead of two pre-filled 50 milliliter amps of D50, you'll only find one in the new drug box. But remember, there's another amp of D50 in your APAC. In addition, the weight of the new drug box has been reduced. Most of this weight loss is due to replacing the two 250 milliliter bags of normal saline with one 50 milliliter bag. You'll no longer find a pre-pierced reseal vial adapter or carp eject. All one milliliter TB syringes have been removed and replaced with one milliliter syringes that have a lure lock at the end of them. This allows us to easily administer medications with a one milliliter syringe in both needle and needleless IV tubing sets. In the old drug box, we carried a lot of extra equipment, which has been greatly reduced as seen here. Each time you exchange a drug box, a Southeast Michigan medication box replacement form must be completed. There are some minor changes to the form that you need to be aware of. Starting at the top of the form, you'll see that none of the basic demographic information has changed from the old form. Just like the old form, document the use of any medications seen here. Here is a close-up of the medication table. Document the total number of medication used during the call. This section is new to this form. For example, three vials of adenosine used on an SVT call. Then, put a slash through the boxes in the used column for all medications that were not used. You can use the note column to document anything noteworthy, such as a missing vial. Just like we did in the used column, put a slash through the boxes in the note column that did not require a note. As a reminder, if you identify a missing or broken medication or supply item, you must complete a discrepancy form, which you'll find at the bottom of the drug box. The form is self-explanatory and walks you through the necessary information that you need to document, as well as where you need to send the form once it's completed. Below the medications table, you'll find the controlled substance medication table. Again, fentanyl, morphine, and midazolam, which is also known as Versed, are the only controlled substances that we carry. Use of a controlled substance also requires EMS providers to document the dose given, the dose wasted, information regarding any applicable waste, as well as the receiving physician's name and signature if they agree to sign. First, document the dose that you administered in the dose given column. For example, let's say you draw up all two milliliters of fentanyl from a vial containing 100 micrograms and you administer 50 micrograms during the call. In this situation, you would document the 50 micrograms as seen here. After you've wasted the medication, you'll need to document that here. Then put a slash through all the other controlled substances that were not used during the call. If you waste any amount of a controlled substance, you'll need to document further information here. Print the name of the person who witnessed the waste here. A witness can be another ALS crew member or a licensed member of the hospital staff. A BLS provider assigned to an ALS unit is considered an ALS crew member. Then print the name of the medic that wasted the controlled substance. Each time a controlled substance is utilized, attempt to obtain a physician's signature, print their name, and document the date. Here's a closer look at this section. Again, attempt to obtain a physician's signature here when a controlled substance is used. 
but remember, physicians retain the right to not sign. If a physician refuses to sign, simply write, physician refuses to sign on the line here. If the physician signs, print their name on this line. If the physician refuses to sign, simply leave this part blank. Then simply document the date. If a controlled substance is missing, broken, or even tampered with, complete a discrepancy form, which you'll find at the bottom of the drug box. Again, this form is self-explanatory and walks you through the necessary information that you need to document, as well as where to send the form once it's completed. The next section, which is the miscellaneous section, can be found here. Here's a closer look. You'll notice that the required information is identical to the medication section. Input the total number of items used in the used column. For example, one nebulizer used on a call. Then strike out all other boxes in the column for items that were not used. In the note column, input anything noteworthy, such as two missing 60 drop IV tubing sets. And strike out all applicable boxes. Again, fill out a discrepancy form as needed. When online medical control orders a medication, document the physician's name and hospital here. This may be different from the hospital that you are exchanging your drug box. Print the name of the hospital that the drug box exchange is taking place here. Finally, the paramedic statement is the last section that must be completed. This section allows EMS to document that a drug box was utilized and a new drug box has been exchanged as a replacement. Input the number of the used drug box that was opened here. Input the number of the replacement drug box here. Then input the breakaway tag number or the green tag number of the replacement drug box here. Finally, sign and date the form. Thank you for watching this brief overview of the Southeast Michigan Regional Medication Box. Please contact the OCMCA by email at qi at with any questions. Have a great day.